irrespective of how this person is so bad and so evil, that God still loves this person. And so, no matter what you have that can be justified, that can be proved, that everybody can see that, no, this person is bad, this person did something evil, God still stretched forth his hands to everyone. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. I said we're gonna get a bell, but I'm yet to get that. Oh, today's actually Black Friday, so no, I'm not buying a bell. <laughs> okay, so welcome back to my channel. Uh, my name is Teresa DBC, and this is my channel where I talk about God with my lifestyle. If you're just joining, just hit the subscribe button. No long thing, we move. All right, today um I'm going to talk in about Jonah. I'm sure most of us we know the story of Jonah in the Bible. And when Jonah comes to mind, there's always this first thing that we all get obedience. That's like the first message that comes to mind when we hear about Jonah. But during my Bible study, um, I was really curious as to why some things happened um close to the end of the chapter. And I really wanted to find out some more, which I did, and I went to just research more and to learn more about um Jonah, and I got to know something that i believe god wanted me to know and it, it might be something that I've, I've even been doing and probably i'm not even aware of and so we're going to be talking about that today um this video is not going to be unnecessarily long so stay tuned and enjoy we all know jonah as the person that um tried to run from god god um sent him to nineveh and he was going to the other direction because he didn't want to do what god asked him to do and then we know the story of, you know, the ship that I was on or the boats, whichever one was on water, <laughs> had lots of, um, what is it called something that happens to ship on water? The word just left my brain right now. Hey, God, do, uh-uh, something, something turbulence. That's for air flight. <laughs> well, you get what I'm trying to say. I cannot remember right now. But I had issue and then there was storm and all of these things. And we know that, yeah, um, the lot was casted and Jonah. Jonah was reviewed as a person that had something um, against God or something with God and then throwing him inside the water, the whale swallowing him and then living in the whale for three days. And then he asked for mercy, he prayed to God and God um, showed him mercy and then the fish parts him out. <laughs> okay, so that's like the summary of the story we know about Jonah. And whenever we talk about Jonah, it comes to mind that oh you're running from god if god calls you to do this you're running from him you're not doing what god wants you to do well i probably you might be watching this video and you already have this understanding or this knowledge about the story of jonah like there are more lessons to learn from his story about from apart from just being obedience to god and it's the story of god himself so in the story of jonah um, most of us we don't tend to see who god is like how god has revealed himself to us through that story and even before jesus christ i mean jonah is in the old testament so even before jesus christ came and he gave us the word to go into the world and preach the gospel that god actually already started this in the case of jonah so let me take it back and talk about what the lesson that god just revealed to me so jonah was um, an israelite and they they always they always at war with um, nineveh and so when god asked him to go there he wasn't just Try not to be obedient to God, but also he had something against Nineveh and he didn't want to go there. And then at the end of the day, when the whole thing happened with fish swallowing him, and then he later went there and did what God told him to do to warn the people that they should turn away from their sin and turn to God. What really baffled me when I was reading that scripture was when um, he warned them and then they repented and then they wore sackcloth and they, they, um, no one ate and all of that they declared fasting and all and then jonah was very sad he he, he was really surprising because i i now kept on asking and thinking that why is he sad and then you know god went to him and god was asking like do you want me to destroy all, all of these people and all of that because god actually gave them the grace and he was going to forgive them and that made jonah unhappy now relating that to our present day and present time most of us one way or the other we act like jonah in fact we are jonah i can call us jonah tools or jonah 
Jonah Lee, Jonathan. Well, I'm sorry if anybody is behind Jonah that you're watching this video. But most of us, we act like Jonah. And how do we act like Jonah? I'm going to break it down to like the lowest level so that we, we can understand. So you at a place of work, your workplace, and you have a colleague that is very wicked, very evil, does a lot of bad things, um, lies, is so deceitful. You know, the colleague is always plotting evil and all of that. And because of that, you already, let me use the word, dislike the person or hate the person. You don't want to have anything to do with the person. In fact, you pray against this person that maybe God should just let them sack him or sack her. Just This person should just leave where I am and all of that. Now, what God told Jonah was for him to go to Nineveh to warn them. And when he did and they turned from their sins and they repented and God was going to show them mercy, Jonah was unhappy. And do you know why he was unhappy? Of course, he has lots of evidences that these people are not actually good. These people do not love God. Like they, they don't do anything that pleases God. And God still chose to show mercy. God still chose to show compassion. And that made me to just know one thing that God is for all. That colleague that you hate so much, that really does many bad things. And you can list from one to like 10 of the bad things that this person does. That person that you can, you might have even tagged this person as an enemy, you know, village people in court, all of these things. I'm not going to shock you by saying this because I believe you should know, but do you know that God still loves them all, including you? Like God loves everyone. And most of the time, not even most of the time, all of the time, God is always the one coming to us. We have never gone to him. If we start from the case of Adam and Eve, after they ate the um, for, forbidden fruit, they didn't go to God. It was God that came to them. Jesus Christ coming to the world to die for our sins. We did not go to him. He came to us. And so that shows that irrespective of how this person is so bad and so evil, that God still loves this person. And so no matter what you have that can be justified, that can be proved, that Everybody can see that, no, this person is bad, this person did something evil. God still stretched forth his hands to everyone. It's, it's something that we have to learn how to do. And, and I'm saying we because I know that I'm also speaking to myself. There are so many things that we have judged on, so many people that we have given up on, so many people that we have written off and we are like, you, you are so very bad. I don't want to mention names, but... I mean, there are, there are just some people that you can see, even nations, talking about Russia, talking about Israel, talking about, um, what's this other place called Palestine, which is um, Gaza or Gaza. You know, there are so many nations, so many people that we might have written over and were like, no, these people are so evil. They kill, they destroy, they do a lot of things. But God still loves them. Like God will still go to the end of the earth to save these people. And if God can do that, then who are we to now put ourselves at that position to judge or to write people off or to think that you, you cannot be saved? You, you are a lost cause. Why are we to do that? I want us to really learn this from the story of Jonah, that apart from him running away from God, Jonah also did not want God to save them. So his plan was, after he decided to obey and then he still went there to pass the news and deliver God's message. His plan in his head is like, yes, God will destroy these people. That was his plan because that's the only reason why he was sad. That was the only reason why he was unhappy after God, after they repented and God was going to show them mercy. That was the only reason. Because I was wondering that, wait, though, when you went to pass a message to someone that maybe um, the person is going to be destroyed and then the person now repent and you're not sad <laughs> like why are you sad you should be happy that oh this person is not going to be destroyed and that was why i, I was interested in that story that what made jonah sad like what was it and i didn't know like the the back up story until i did the study and i got to realize that Nineveh is actually like their enemy and his joy would have been if god had destroyed them and most of us we are like jonah we may actually go to god to destroy some people like i'm not saying that they are not enemies. I'm not saying that they are not powers. But I'm talking about the love that God has for all. And the, that, the kind of place that you can be. That no matter the forces, no matter 
your position, no matter what happens, that God will still always be for you. It's not something that is easy to do because if I have a proof that this person is this terrible, this person is this bad, and God is telling me to go and preach this person, hey, God now, what's going on here? <laughs> like, I'm going to be like, ah, no, no, I cannot, I cannot come to do this. We would do that because it's just logical for us to do that. That We know that this person is bad. This person has dealt with me and God is telling me to go and preach to the person and tell the person to repent. Really? Is the person not come, supposed to come to me and ask for my forgiveness and beg and... But sorry to shock you, God does not work that way. God sees beyond what we see as human. God sees, he sees way... You don't know if that person that has dealt with you, that has showed you pepe, pshege. You don't know if that person will still turn out to be the person that will be preaching to thousands of people in the world. We do not know because we are not God. God knows all. And the fact that he will go the extra length to save every soul. God does not want anyone to perish. It shows us that if we are supposed to be like God, then that is what we should do. We should not write anyone off. We should not think that this person cannot be saved. You know, we wish people bad because this person has dealt with me. You know, keeping malice and you never, you even pray against the person. You don't pray for the person. We cannot take the place of God. And how can we avoid being like Jonah? What can we do that will make us not act like Jonah? I'm going to read the Bible um, briefly. I'm going to read Matthew, Matthew 28, 19 to 20. Just back this top scripture right so you don't say this is seeing everything from my head wish you you should not go and have me to in mind <laughs> okay so matthew 28 where am i okay 28 19 to 20 i'm quickly going to read that out for us matthew 28 19 to 20 says go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. The major punchline in this scripture is, go ye therefore and teach all nations. The Bible would not say, go and teach those that you love alone. The Bible did not say, go and teach those that shows you love. The Bible not say, go and teach those that gives you money. The Bible not say, go and teach those that they, they, they treat you well at work. The Bible not say you should go and teach those that, you know, they take you out, they, they promote your business. The Bible did not send us to a specific number of persons. It sent us to all. Go ye therefore into the world and preach unto all nations. So clearly, you know, the scripture has everything we need. And there's no mistake in the Bible. Using all. All, I don't know if I have H factor, if I have it, I'm a Yoruba girl. Using all is just the clear direction and instruction from God. We are not to think that this person is not worthy to be loved by God, that this person is not worthy to be saved by God, that this person is a right of, it is not our duty, it is not our job to do that. Because if we start doing that, how do you know that you yourself, you have what it takes to be saved? How do you know? The Bible says that righteousness is like filthy rag. So even you that you think that holier than thou, you are doing everything good, you are in line with God, or you give, you smile, you do not know what goes on in your heart. And God is the God that searches all hearts. He knows the intention of our hearts. He says the heart of the man is de desperately wicked. Who can know it? So you might be doing so many things on the physical I am not checkmating with your heart because the fact that you even think that this person cannot be saved already shows that there's something in your heart that God needs to work on. And I'm just here today to tell us that it is not our duty to judge. It is not our duty to write anyone off. Instead, as children of God, we have been sent to everyone, irrespective of who these people are, irrespective of what they have done to hurt you, irrespective of what they have done to pull you down. It is your duty to show love, to pray, to, to stand in gap for everyone. That is what we have been commanded to do. Having this understanding will help you to realize that, okay, if God has sent me to all, then definitely there is something God wants me to do. If you are not aware of that, this is 
they, they, I, I don't think there can be a better time for you to ask. That is not now. To know what God wants you to do. That, okay, if God has told me to go into the world and preach to all nations, in what area exactly, in what aspects is God teaching me to go to? Who are those God sending me to? I'm saying who are those, not for you to now screen and say this one can be saved, this one cannot be saved. But you can be sent to children. You can be sent to the old, old um, older generation. You can be sent to men. You can be sent to women. But it's still everyone. So that's what I mean by who are those? Knowing your specific assignments, knowing your specific purpose. Because Jonah obeyed God at the end, after he ran away. And I mean, the logical thing is God should be happy with him. That's okay, finally he obeyed. But God wasn't because he still had something in his heart. That even after the obedience, which this that's the major story we learned, like obedience, disobedience and all of that. Even after that, he still had something even greater than in disobeying God, in his heart, he had hatred. There was no love. There was no love in his heart. There was no love. He wanted God to destroy the children of Nineveh. He wanted them to be destroyed. And so when he went to warn them and then they repented, they was like, ah, that's so why did you send me here? Why did you, like when, when the scripture says that thing that he, he said, why did God send me here? That? So they will not take him, in my words, like they will not take him serious. They, so they'll be like, he had so much against them that he didn't see what God was trying to do. And that's just to tell us, um, speaking to everyone watching this video, that hatred in your heart that you have against that person, that you even have enough evidence to justify that this person is evil. God does not see that person the way you see that person. And we cannot do this by our strength. We need the grace of God. We need the strength of God to be able to break down ourselves, to be dead to self, because it takes you being dead to self to be able to do some things. Your flesh will always tell you that, hey, eh? this girl that insulted my mother and my father, you want me to go and never over my dead body? How's your flesh speaking? Oh, this person that made me lose my job, they are telling me to pray for this person. God forbid. That is your flesh speaking. Which is why it's important that every day we pray to God that help me to be dead to my flesh. Let your spirit be in charge. Let your spirit be in control. Because if we allow this flesh to lead us, my brother and sister in the Lord, it's not going to lead us to anywhere good. So I just want to, should I use the word preach? Or to just say to everyone watching this video, set your heart. Let your heart be aligned with God. God loves all, irrespective of who you are. God always comes to save, so no one is a write-off with God. Learn to see people as God see them, no matter how badly they've hurt you. Learn to see past that. Learn to see them how God would see them and how God is actually seeing them. And I pray that God will continue to break us down, take away all our fleshly desires, everything that's still hindering us from doing what we are supposed to do, that everything will be taken away and will begin to walk. This prayer is my favorite prayer for us to walk in the realization of who God is and who He has called us to be in Jesus' name. I hope that this short word or message will bless you. Um, yeah, I remain there is at the BC. And I'll see you in my next video. By God's grace. Bye.